Hello, denizens. Welcome to Hackintosh Beat. Well, it's that time of month. I, well, I mean, not for me, but it's Open Core Month. Every month, they they bring out the gang at Open Core bring out a new version of Open Core, and now it's at 0.7.6, just in time for Christmas, and I'm going to update my uh, computer. So people have asked me. How do you update using Hack and ROM, which is what I use for this particular computer because um, this Vision G, uh, Gigabyte Vision G motherboard is one of the listed compatible motherboards for Hack and ROM and it works extremely well and I've now grown to, to trust it. Uh, my other computers, my other Hackintoshes in, the, in my house, I use OC Gen X. So, uh, and people have asked, how do you update using Hack and ROM? Well, it's, it's extremely simple, but you've asked, so I'm going to to show you. For those of you who know how to use it, just hide your eyes. You can wait till another portion of this video, go make lunch or something. I, I, I don't care. Zip ahead. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to go over some of the new features uh, available in uh, OC 0.7.6. Very, very exciting stuff. The main headline feature is support for 12th, 12th gen Intel uh, CPUs, which is like insane. I think that's that's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of good performance data from those particular computers. I'm not updating to Monterey because uh, uh, you know they're still having issues with regards to a couple of things. Um, most importantly, is the FenV Wi-Fi Bluetooth compatibility, which is hit and miss. So I'm not going to risk updating to Monterey uh, just to see whether I can get. Uh, the Wi-Fi card broken. <laughs> I don't. I don't need that. And the last thing I'm going to do, and this is also a request from many of you online, is uh, I, they they saw that, or I've talked about the fact that I I back up using Time Machine. Uh, and how would one recover a Hackintosh using Time Machine? The first thing we're going to do is uh, upgrade to 0.7.6 using Hack and Drum. I'm going to go to Launchpad, hit H, click on Hack and Drum. Also, make sure that you download the latest version of any utility. It just got updated, so I checked for that already. So I've up, I've already updated that. Hack and Drum shows up here at the top. I just mount my boot drive. It indicates to me that uh, I am at uh, what I have to update to 0.7.6, and I'm at 0.7.4. I didn't. I didn't update to 7.5 because there really wasn't you know, a lot new in it that was useful to me. Uh, even 0.7.6 is not, I, I think, particularly necessary for this, this setup. Very simply, you just click on update to 0.7.6. Hack and Drum gives you these two columns, a green bunch of switches and a blue bunch of switches. The blue switches uh, indicates the, uh, the files that you want to upload and the green side is whether you want to turn them on or not. And in this particular case, I like having a clean EFI folder, as clean as possible. I don't want junk in there. So I'm going to click off the blues because I don't even want to uh, download it to my system. Next, let's go to the texts. We'll go to turn off our Broadcom fix up because I don't need it. I am running a Fenvi card, which is naturally compatible. Although one of the issues is that uh, Monterey uh, is hit and miss with supporting that particular Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. So it's one of the reasons I'm not updating to Monterey. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff in there, but I, I got to be fairly certain that it works entirely on my Hackintosh, which is why I read the forums. You go to the forums, you see what other people are saying. I don't need the brightness keys because that's for um, a portable. Turn that off there. And I think I'm... Oh, yeah, right. I also don't need these networking. I don't need small tree networking because I'm using the Intel uh, i225V network card. And where are we here? I think there's in Intel Mousy, which is another networking uh, Protocol support, I don't need that. That's fine. Drivers, I'm all good here. So now we hit the update open core button. And now it's downloading files, downloading texts, and you're done. That's it. 
you're completely finished. Now, uh, it's that simple. I, I, there's, I don't think there's any other open core update service that's as easy to use as, as um, Hack and Drum. Now, the thing is, uh, one of the reasons I like it is because it supports this particular computer. Uh, I have read online that it can support multiple computers independent of the ones that are in the list. But I, and I'll, I'll show it to you later once we reboot, once I reboot. But, um, you know, if you are people who have been asking me what motherboard to buy to Hackintosh, well, uh, you know, if you want to work within the hack and drum world, which uh, quite frankly has been very, very easy and stable to use, I would just pick from the motherboards that are listed here. So there, and you're done, and it all seems to work. The other nice thing that Hack and Drum does is package your old EFI into a zip file. And now I'm going to reboot. Restart. Anything to do with Hackintoshing. I don't know if you're the same way as me. It's, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and the reboot after any kind of update is always fraught with anxiety. The Well, initially, even installing the OS, it's always a miracle when it comes up. That's, that's always fun. Uh, and then when you uh, update OpenCore, uh, and I mean, at the time it was Clover, but all of that, you were always nervous of whether you were going to pooch something. And then there's the actual uh, OS update, which is probably has, you know, provides the most level of anxiety. But you go in the forums, you read what other people's experiences are, and before you do any of that, you just, you know, don't suddenly click update the moment Apple updates their, their OS. So now we wait. There it is. You can see motherboard. Oh, there we go. And now we've got the matrix because I've got it set to verbose makes it feel very computery. Now it's thinking. I'm, I'm still nervous. Is this going to work? Oh, stop. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's going because it'll, it'll, it'll stop. You go, is it stuck? <laughs> there's the Apple menu. There's the thermometer. Can you, can you see that in the screen? I, I don't know if you can see it over on that side. There's the thermometer. Is okay. it, it, it's, uh oh, it's stuck. It's stuck. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead. Keep, keep going. Uh oh. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it worked. It worked. It's alive. It's alive. Over time, you'll find out whether things have uh, uh, have settled down. Now, one of the things that you want to do is, you know, you let this work for a while. Make a backup of the the EFI file that you have created as soon as possible on, on a stick, on some other drives, whatever, it's really important to make sure that that gets backed up immediately. Oh, and I'm gonna show you how you need to use this for uh, the time machine uh, recovery. How do you create a new EFI? Very, very simply, just go create EFI. There's your motherboard choices, AS, ASRock. What is, how do you pronounce it? Is it ASRock, ASRock? I have no idea. ASUS Dell Gigabyte HP. So I'm gonna go to Gigabyte here. And then there's a, a good variety of motherboards now. It used to be cut down quite small, mainly because um, uh, Hack and Drum specialized in Thunderbolt enabled motherboards. I know the Visions are and the old uh, Designare Gigabyte designer motherboards are. Uh, so there, uh, if I go to uh, Asus, then we can see that there's four motherboards there. So people ask me what motherboard should they get uh, to build a Hackintosh. Probably I would download Hackandrom, uh, launch it and see which motherboards it supports because so far it's been very effective and it has worked well for me and it really makes life easy and does pretty much everything for you. That being said, uh, as, as an old old guard, I would still read the Dortania open core documentation. Um, to be completely ignorant of how this all works uh, is not helpful. It absolutely is, is not helpful. Learn, learn the mechanics of it, learn what it's doing. Uh, take a look at the, um, at the 
the code, the EFI code that it creates. Let's go to the update. December. And just very quickly, the, the highlights are good evening, noticed winter's coming. So uh, Alder Lake, there we go. First Intel, this requires a substantial amount of changes in open core and Kext, and we believe it's possible that more changes will happen, but it's being supported, which is unbelievably exciting and crazy because Alder Lake, uh, I didn't really expect it to be supported because Apple is never going to support it. That being said, uh, the big rock in CPU has got these power cores and these efficiency cores. And I think uh, based on my reading, they've been able to get uh, either the power cores and the efficiency cores running, but without uh, hyper-threading. Um, or if you, you turn off the uh, efficiency cores and then you can get the main cores and the the hyper-threading. The other thing is obviously don't you don't need to buy the best version of the 12th gen Intel CPU. Uh, just get one of the lower ones uh, without the efficiency cores. Uh, the other thing too is you cannot use the graphics, built-in graphics features of the of the chip. So you get the uh, the F chip, I think that's what it is. So the F version does not have a built-in GPU because you don't need to you, you don't know why pay for it if you don't if you don't need it. So we've got ALC Apple ALC update for Z690 audio controllers, which is amazing. Uh, I like this uh, thanks to Goldfish64 for OpenCore now supports higher resolution mode set on old Nvidia old uh, Nvidia GPUs. <laughs> Just get a AMD GPU if you can. I mean if it's not worth tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, uh, let's see now, Protect U FI services no longer crashes on certain Dell computers. So don't buy those certain Dell computers, just the, just the non-certain ones. That's the one you want to uh, buy. And the Lilu uh, got uh, crash fixes, uh, blah, blah, blah. So these are all unbelievably useful and makes OpenCore even more stable. But Yes, the big news is that they've got it running on 12th gen Intel CPUs, which is crazy. Um, Apple will be, you know, supporting Intel-based Macintoshes for at least another four, five years. So have fun, play around, go get yourself a thousand dollar CPU, <laughs> $600 motherboard and go crazy. Now let's get to the biggest requested item. How do you recover a Hackintosh using a time machine? Now, generally speaking, uh, I make life easy. I not only back up regularly on Time Machine because it also backs up all these other drives automatically. So I'm not always recovering my my boot drive. I'm recovering files and things from other other drives. And in fact, my one of my three terabyte drives went south, and it was very easy to recover using uh, rebuild it, uh, bought a new bought a new drive and then use Time Machine to recover that. But generally speaking, I also do a full backup of the boot drive on its own. And on my boot drive, all I have is the OS and apps. I do not have any files uh, on that. That's a good good habit to, to be in. So how do you do this? Well, uh, you need to get your, your open core uh, boot stick. So I'm going to stick that in. Uh, I have got my time machine drive in my toaster, in my hard drive cradle, which other people call a toaster. And so now I'm going to restart. As soon as it goes black, I'm going to mash the F12 key. Once you reboot and you've been mashing 12, then you'll get the choice of what drive you want to start with. And we want to go with the UEFI, UEFI Kingston Data Traveler in this particular case. And we just say yes. And we get the screen that uh, you get to choose what drive you want to select. In this particular case, the backup drive is not showing up. The, the time machine drive is not showing up. So you hit the space bar and then you get all your drives showing up. And then we select Time Machine. I'm going to cut all this exciting stuff out. 
of the video, don't worry. So over here, and you click on Disk Utility, Continue, Format your boot drive. You do have to format it. Uh, more than likely you're installing a new one, or you've completely, if you've completely pooched your entire install, but your drive is fine, then you still have, you have to erase the drive. Once that's done, you just go restore from backup. And that's pretty much it. And you pick the version that is the most recent. Hopefully you, uh, you back up regularly. I have mine plugged in all the time and it's easy peasy. Now it just takes a bit of time, but you're done. Addendum alert, addendum alert. Okay. <laughs> Denizens. I had, uh, I had uploaded the stupid video up onto YouTube. I was ready to publish it. And then I had this nagging feeling that I'd forgotten something on the video and I was right. I checked it and I forgot to close the loop on the time machine segment. Yes, of course, if you reboot it after uh, you, you, you did what I just told you to do, nothing would happen. Of course, you know why nothing would happen, right? Because it needs to have an EFI folder in the EFI directory. Yeah. So you're gonna have to uh, boot from your little uh, USB stick with the e proper EFI folder on it, uh, in its EFI directory. Then you're going to have to reveal the EFI directory uh, uh, on your boot drive and copy the folder from here over to there. And then you can reboot and everything will be fine. Now, of course you knew this, right? But I needed to close the loop because I know you trust me to give you the right information. Uh, and so you're crazy, but I, I'm trying my best. Uh, trust me. Anyways, that's it, Denizens. Now back to our regularly scheduled ending. Thank you for watching, Denizens. This has been Hackintosh Beat. Be seeing you.